but this dividing and applying of the popedom unto two or three states is not agreeable, especially when the seventh, which they make his temporal government, should last but a short time. And yet it hath lasted longer than any of the other governments. Therefore we may say that the government of the Goths, or rather the Exarchy of Ravenna, for they held Rome season, was the seventh, and that lasted but a short time, and then came the Popedom, which is like one of the seven. That is not so fit, because the Pontifex, as Pontifex, never had entire and sovereign government of all. And he succeeded not the other governments, but was a companion to them all. Neither did tribuni rule as chief magistrates, but were intercessors for the people with the chief magistrate. Thus hath John evidently described Rome unto us, with the double persecuting state thereof. There is no city can be showed to have altered the kind of government so oft, and if others may be found to have done it, yet the other marks together with this agree none but this. Besides these things in the Revelation, there remaineth somewhat in Paul pertaining to the description of this beast, which showeth his intolerable pride. Paul saith of Antichrist, he exalteth himself against all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he doth sit as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This the papists deny to agree to the Pope, and therefore think he is not the proud beast. For, say they, he calleth himself Serum Savorum Dei, and acknowledgeth himself the vicar of Christ. So far is he from making himself Christ and God in the temple of God, and he prayeth to God and Christ, and kneeleth at his altars humbly. But he must be measured not by his hypocritical actions, nor by his words in his hypocrisy, but by the nature and kind of his government. Fox saith that he exalteth himself above all that is called God, or is Augustum in earth, when he lifteth himself above emperors and kings, for they are not gods, but are called gods, and they are Augusti, they are in earth that they of all men should have honor and worship given to them. But the emperors and kings he hath so debased that he hath made them think it some honor for them to kiss his foot. The Pope hath caught, caused the emperor to hold his stirrup. He hath put his feet in the emperor's neck he hath fed a prince like a dog under his table, and he hath turned the imperial crown from the head with his foot. He hath made the emperor ten at his gate barefooted. In this behalf they have done that also which pertaineth only to God. For they will give and take away kingdoms at their pleasure. Thus in one sense they have exalted themselves above all that is called God, or that is worshipped and showed themselves as God. And they have showed themselves as God many other ways, in respect of the conscience, either in holding it guilty or in acquitting it, for that pertaineth only to God. But they would bind it by their laws and interpretation of scriptures and thundering of excommunications against the innocent, and loose it by forgiving sins and granting pardons and dispensations in all kind of things. Thus have they showed themselves as God in the temple of God in respect of men's consciences and in respect of heaven and hell and purgatory. He hath pretended to rule as God in all these places. For he will make saints in heaven whom he will and hold in purgatory, or let, let out whom 
he lists, and for this last, it is no marvel, for it is of his own making, last of all in his laws, and by his flatterers he hath been called God in plain terms, and he hath suffered it. There it is written, Dominus Deus Noster Papa, our Lord God the Pope, and again, Tu es omnia and super omnia, thou art all and above all. How can any creature show himself as God in God's temple more presumptuously than by these means or more directly? For otherwise in flat terms to proclaim himself as God to be honored. With divine honor it is too gross and it is not such a crafty mystery as should deceive a, a mean man much less bring into danger God's elect. To these things agree the words of Daniel, which many take as spoken a purpose of Antichrist, or at least they are applied to him by the fathers. The king shall do what him list, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself against all that is called God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath be accomplished. For the determination is made, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor care for any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Peter and Jude speak of their pride in lifting themselves above magistrates, saying that they should despise government and speak evil of them that are in authority. These are the marks of this beast. Other might be added out of Daniel, Paul, and Peter as that they shall worship God with gold and silver for all their religion stood in outward worldly ostentation that they should forbid marriage in meats as they make great holiness in single life and account marriage unclean and the eating of flesh at certain times they utterly condemn as unholy that likewise they should be rich and mighty and should make merchandise of all things yea, of men's souls. For they, as in way of religion, sold wood, stones, incense, oil, and all things, if they had dedicated them once to some holy use, they were costly merchandise, although otherwise the vilest things that might be. All these marks agree most fitly to the Romish Antichrist and to none other. The Pope, therefore, is the beast which being aided by the kings of the earth fighteth against Jesus Christ. As for the marks which the Papists make of Antichrist, they touch him not, they come not near him, they imagine he should be of the tribe of Dan, because the tribe is not reckoned among the tribes, of which many are marked to be saved. A weak foundation, the tribe is there omitted. Therefore Antichrist shall come of that tribe. Thus. Uh, they ground their religion of that which the scripture hath not said. And as for Enoch and Elias to come and preach against him in their own persons, which they say they have not done against the Pope, and therefore he is not that beast, that is a thing imagined as the other, for no scripture has said that they too should come, but they should ground it on this, that Christ saith, Elias should come and restore all things which was fulfilled at his first coming, and that two witnesses are promised to be sent against. Antichrist, which are understood by many to be John Huss and Hiram of Prague, both burned at the Council of Constance, or as others expounded of a sufficient number to count the errors of Antichrist, for the scripture maketh two witnesses a sufficient trial and this age has sent out many witnesses against him, that also which they say is not yet fulfilled, and yet must be before the coming of Antichrist is false, which is that the gospel must first be publicly preached and received in all kingdoms of the world, but it is not anywhere said that this should be for the coming of Antichrist. Christ saith that the gospel should be pre preached through the world before the end should come. 
And it is one thing for the gospel to be preached, and another thing to be received. It hath been preached, that is, by some means made known to all nations, but it hath not been publicly received of all nations by common cons consent. Another thing that cometh near this, another thing that cometh near this is that which St. Paul saith, that there must be an apostate, apostasy first. A falling away from the faith and not from the empire of Rome is meant by it. For Paul saith using that, that word to Timothy, that looks like apostasy. Some shall fall from the faith. And the word is not used otherwise in Scripture. And the apostle seemeth so to expound it afterward himself, when he saith, Because men receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For if they receive not the love of the truth, it seemed that they had the truth, but loved it not and therefore were thus punished. Wherefore there must be a falling away from the faith and from the love of the truth, and strong delusion to believe lies, where Antichrist is. These things came to pass in popery. So much, therefore, as is said concerning the gospel, to be received or forsake, before or in the kingdom of Antichrist, is fulfilled in them. Yet they say the Pope is free from one especial and notable mark of the beast. What is that? John saith, He that denieth that Jesus is Christ, the same as Antichrist. And again, every spirit which confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. But this is the spirit of Antichrist. And Peter agreeably saith, They shall deny the Lord that bought them. And Jude in like manner they deny God, the only Lord, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. And somewhat like it, by way of affirmation, is that of Daniel. He shall honor the God whom his fathers knew not. This mark, they say, of denying Christ, the popes have not. If they have not this mark also, then they have none of the rest. Large books are written of this to show how they deny Christ. They den deny him to be the king over his church. For the Pope maketh himself the king, but saith Bellarmin, he, acknowledge, he acknowledgeth himself Christ's deputy. But it is certain that Christ never commanded any such deputy nor vicar. And if he will be Christ's deputy against the pleasure and will of Christ, or if he were depute, deputed, yet rule otherwise than Christ would have him, and only according to his own affection and humor doth he not thrust Christ out of his kingdom. As though one might not call himself a deputy and draw all to himself, so doth the Pope, howbeit, Christ never ordained such a deputy. Therefore, while he will be as Christ and for Christ, he is made against him, and is antichrist. Furthermore, he doth not suffer Christ to be the only and sufficient prophet to his church, which hath revealed fully the will of the Father to it. For partly he shutteth up his testament, and will not have the people read it, and partly he ordaineth other laws as necessary to salvation. As the laws of Christ by his decrees, and partly he interpreteth the words of Christ, not according to Christ's meaning, but according to his own fancy, he established his own earthly kingdom. And partly he interpreted the words of Christ, not according to Christ's meaning, but according to his own fancy, to establish his own earthly kingdom. Last of all, he denieth to Christ also his priesthood. For neither doth he admit the sacrifice of Christ by himself, in his own person upon the cross as sufficient for salvation. But he ordaineth another sacrifice of the Mass, 
and satisfactory works of penance and men's merits to redeem their own sins. Neither doth he permit Christ to be the only intercessor and maker of request to the Father for his people, but he joineth with him or substituteth under him the Virgin Mary and a great number of saints of his own creation. Thus he denieth, denieth Jesus to be Christ and showeth himself to be an enemy unto him and the very Antichrist. Wherefore, all the notes and marks of the beast fall upon him. This is the beast that John speaketh of, which doth associate to him the kings of the earth and their armies, and maketh war against Christ and his army. This is now our enemy. He and his kings fight against us. It is good for us to think of him as he is, and as he is called in Scripture. Let us not think of him as of an holy father. Christ's vicar, a sacred person, the pillar of Christ's religion, the highest bishop, a God in earth, as the papist and his own servants and flatterers, so many as have not received the love of the truth, such whose names are not written in the book of life, do esteem him. But let us think of him as of the great whore, the mother of all fornication in the earth, for his idolatry as a Babylon, for his persecuting empire, as of an apostata, for his falling from the true faith, as of Antichrist and the enemy of Christ, for denying the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice and intercession, for expelling Christ out of his throne of government, and stepping into it himself for displacing Christ's word and corrupting it and putting his own word in the room thereof. Let us account him as the beast that hath not one shape but the properties of many beasts and therefore a monstrous beast, proud like the lion, cruel like the bear, filthy like the swine, full of poison through his blasphemies like the dragon, and yet in show of horns like the lamb. This is the leader and captain of all our enemies. If we yield to them, we yield to the beast, and the beast will make us beasts like himself. We must bear the beast's mark. God defend us from him. And rep repress his fury and confound his enterprises and overthrow his kingdom thus much of the beast his kingdom thus much of the beast the beast fighteth not alone against Christ and his people for then he were not m much to be feared but he hath first kings and then his own and their armies to assist him first will I speak of the kings and then of their armies. Kings were prophesied to be subject to him. The angel saith to John, The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which yet have not received a kingdom, but shall receive power as kings at one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and authority to the beast. These shall fight with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are on his side, called the chosen and faithful. Again he saith, The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast are they that shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to do with one consent, for to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. Thus kings shall subject themselves to the beast, shall give their authority to him, shall fight for him so long as God hath appointed. The love of these kings to Rome and their obedience is expressed, which they showed to it in time of the prosperity thereof in this manner. With her have committed fornication the kings of the earth. 
and in the time of the decay of it in this sort the kings of the earth shall bewail her and lament for, for her which have committed fornication and lived in pleasure with her when they shall see the smoke of her burning what other state hath there been or is in the world unto which kings have willingly subjected themselves and yet remain kings but this if any be under the great Turk the name of kings and authority ceaseth, ceaseth, ceaseth by and by he only will be king but in popery the kings submit themselves and become servants and tributary and yet remain kings and take pleasure in this subjection and strive against all others that will not be slaves and bond, bondmen as well as themselves. These kings had the same occasion in time of beginning their kingdoms that the beast had. For the disputation, dissipation of the West Empire, or for the dissipation of the West Empire gave the first occasion at one time to both. For after the great fight between the honey under Attila, on the one side being 500,000 men, and all the power that the other nations, Romans, Goths, Frenchmen, Britons, and Germans, could make on the other side, after this battle fought in Campus Catalonicus in France, the countries were governed not by one emperor overall, but by their own several governors. Then the French began in France, the honey in Hungary, the Saxons in England, the Goths in Spain. And so in every country, either strangers or the older inhabitants took the government to themselves. To find that they were just ten and neither more nor less it is hard but ten may be set for a perfect and full number rising of all the unities the occasion of the rising of the popedom, popedom and of these kingdoms was one and the same and it once began albeit the popedom showed not itself in his great pride and high name of ecumenical bishop till focus the emperor of constantinople in the year 606 then rome was great with child of this beast yea and brought him forth and gave him the name but he did grow up afterward in great haste till he became the mightiest in the west parts of the world but his growing was by suppressing of the empire and by sucking of strength from the emperor and from these kings. The first milk that he did suck was that title gotten of focus that he might be called and taken to be the ecumenical and general high bishop of all the world. Before that time the other patriarchs were equal with him. But by this title he was set over them and all the all other bishops then he obtained more milk of the emperors, although he had much ado to get it. Namely, that the emperor should not confirm him, but his election should be ratified by the Romans and not by the emperor. When he had this, then he was able to go alone. After this, he obtaineth yet more plentiful nourishment and beginneth to swallow down strong meat. He obtaineth by striving the investiture and placing of all bishops in Italy, and the emperor's dominions, and at length, in all the west besides, by this the beast was grown so strong that he would now take upon him to feed or famish his father and feeder. For he would make the emperor, or else he should be no emperor, he would excommunicate him and depose him at his pleasure, and having wrestled and overcome him, it was an easy matter for him to overcome the other kings. Nay, the emperors and kings did willingly give the beast those things, which made him strong and themselves weak, for they swear obedience to him, 
and that they would not diminish his dignity nor commodities or dominions. Edewulfus, king of the West Saxons here in England, was the first that made his land tributary to the Pope in the year 840 and 6. And as this land received the yoke first, so first it cast it off under King Henry VIII by occasion that the emperors in the east destroyed images and for want of might could not hold up the state of Rome against the Longobards in Italy. The Pope excommunicated the emperors of the east one after another and called Carolus Magnus the king of France into Italy for his aid and there made the people proclaim him emperor and he himself anointed him in the year 801. Thus Charles, being an emperor of the Pope's own making, conferred upon the Pope a great part of Italy, and to requite him made him rich. After that part of England, other kingdoms by sundry occasions came under the Pope. The Sclavonians would use their own tongue in their public service of God, but they were content to do it by the Pope's permission, and so declared themselves subject to him uh, the year 861, when M M Miesco, king of Poland, embraced the faith of Christ and appointed bishops in his kingdom, Jonas 13 sendeth one Giles, the Tusculan, bishop and cardinal, to com cons consecrate his bishops after the manner of Rome, and so maketh Poland subject to himself as soon as it was christened in the year 965. To Benedictus the Eighth, Stephanus, king of Hungary, sendeth ambassadors for his crown and confirmation of the kingdom of Hungary, and the churches built it by him. He then brought his kingdom to the obedience of the Pope, and Stephen himself, at every time the Pope was mentioned, bowing his head, did bend his knee, that by his example he might persuade also his people to the observance of the Pope. Robert, Duke of Apulia and Calabria in Italy, bindeth himself by oath and his handwriting to Pope Nicholas the second, to send him aid whensoever he should need, because the Pope absolved him for deposing his brother's son, the right heir from the dukedom. A little before Stephen the Ninth brought the Bishop of Milan, which before that time had always been free to the obedience of the See of Rome, these increases came to the Popedom about the year 1057. A little after this, Hildebrand called Gregory the Seventh. That is reported to have poisoned six popes, one after another, to make a way for himself to the Popedom and was most infamous conjurer and magician, excommunicateth and spoileth of his empire, Henry the Fourth, and setteth up first Rodolphus his servant, and afterward, afterward Henry the Fifth, his own son against him. He sent a crown to Rudolph with this posy, Petra dedit Petro Petrus, Diadema Rodolfo, but R Rodolf, having lost his right hand and dying, cursed them that persuaded him to this. The crime laid to the emperor was simony, as the pope called the bestowing of bishoprics and other ecclesiastical livings by the emperor. These things fell out about the year 1003 score and 10.